Hi everyone, back again, another DNA chat this time. It's always something exciting, but this one is really exciting because I want you to meet my longtime friend, Meryl Brandwine from Florida, from originally from New Jersey, but longtime resident of, of Florida. You recently moved your practice, right? Right. Um, where, where are you now in Florida? So I'm about 15, 20 minutes uh, east of where I was. I was in Weston. Now I'm in Cooper City. Uh, we're in a big, beautiful, actually, I should walk around and show you our amazing teaching <laughs> kitchen. So we're in a 2,400 uh, square foot facility. I uh, am with an acupuncturist as well, who's phenomenal because she brings, uh, you know, a, a collaborative effort that's just phenomenal. Uh, but we do have a full teaching kitchen, so we will start doing the culinary piece along with the nutrition piece, which is, as we all know, so, so necessary. So we're going to jump right in on that because I've known Meryl for a long, long time. She's one of the early adopters in functional nutrition, been in this business a long time, and it shows with the success of her practice. But I remember when we would um, tag team, we'd see clients... Um, uh, share clients basically I do the culinary translation you did the hard all the hard work <laughs> but you said you know your observation was that clients who actually you can um, funnel into culinary translation or you can do that translation work into how they connect food through what they're eating to their health did so much better than clients like hey I'm fine absolutely right there's no question I mean because you do much better when you're in control of what's on your plate and you know how to put it together in a way that's nutritionally supportive. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, and you can't, um, you can't mimic that from a restaurant. You can't with all the fast food, you know, quick, convenient things. You just can't mimic it unless you're actually really, you know, in the kitchen. Exactly. Uh, so everyone, if you haven't guessed it already, Meryl's a dietitian like myself. It'd be nice if I told everyone that, right? But your knowledge is of that of like a surgeon, that I know. You know, mm -hmm. you have been in this field a long time. You're, you're one of like the most premier clinicians that I know and definitely somebody I call if I'm like, oof, I have no idea, Meryl. Would you mind taking this client for me? I'll do the DNA part, but the, the, the hard work of how we translate DNA into practical um, care plans, if you will, a practical journey for someone is, is, you know, truly your expertise, but so is DNA. So we're going to come back to that, but I want to jump in and, you know, talk about your own health journey because you are a 20, is it 21 years or 20 year cancer survivor? 20 year cancer survivor. Yeah. And yeah. And look at you, <laughs> you are, you're this walking light beam of health. So that was 20 years ago and that you and I graduated from the same university at different times in, in dietetics, but that diagnosis changed everything for you. It changed yeah. how you looked at the field of nutrition. Can you take us through that a little bit? I mean, so, you know, I, I always called myself the, the, uh, well, now I call myself the out of the box dietitian, right? Because, uh, clinically I was so in the box before I got sick and, um, what happened was, so I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma in, in, uh, in 2000. It was six weeks after my third child was born. Right. And um, you had to go right into chemo, went right into radiation after that. And then I was sick. I mean, after that, I was my immune system, right? I was cured, but I was sick. And um, my mother-in-law at the time, would, would it, she was always like, oh, well, let's go do some alternative therapy. And, you know, being the in the box dietitian, like, no, 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 <laughs> that doesn't work. We, you know, we're always saying supplements don't work and there's no such thing as alternative. And so I finally said to her at one point, like, I cannot be, cannot feel like this anymore. What do I need to do? And she took me down to Mexico and I went through all of this integrative uh, therapy there. And it was life-changing because at that point it was, what is all this stuff that I was doing? It was, uh, IV therapy, it was coffee enemas, it was uh, vegan meal planning, all kinds of things. Um, wow. And so I came back with a renewed sense of, oh, well, maybe we don't have all the answers uh, the way we understand medicine, right? I was cured of my cancer, but I was so sick. And so, um, so that really, when I came home, was then thrust into the area of, uh, or, or wanted to know more 
functional medicine wasn't even really around. It wasn't even yeah, called functional no, it wasn't. medicine. I remember going to one of Jeff Bland's first uh, conferences and thinking, is this functional thing going to really take off, you know? Um, but learned everything I could, immersed myself into, you know, what now is the modules, right? I was doing all that before they were even modules and um, learned along the way and, and just started to incorporate all of the comprehensive idea of understanding what are the root symptoms, what is the root cause? So right. I was able to then apply that to myself and, and go back and say, okay, well, you know, how do I heal my immune system? How do I heal my gut? How do I do all of these things in the way that I can through using food as right. much as possible and then adjunctively adding in the right kinds of supplementation? And then of course, the big, huge piece that I think we forget is that mind-body connection. Correct. And I always, you know, it's, it's what the mind thinks the body feels. And that is a huge piece of my practice because unless we're able to connect all those dots, we miss the forest for the trees. And so um, the behavior, the lifestyle, all of that was really, it, I was a living, I was my own living, breathing experiment. Right. And so, it, and it's interesting being at the mind body connection because we actually, um, had a client we shared recently and it's not an area I get into just because of my focus, which is why I tag team. But on that note makes me think how, what percentage of your time, if you're seeing a client, do you think now is spent with that, helping them unpack that connection? I, I would say, I would say 80% is up here. The 20 piece of the food that I do is probably the easiest part because wow. yeah, it's huge. I mean, people, you know, don't forget you're seeing people with 20, 30, 40 years of their story. What have they told themselves they are, right? Wow. Especially when it comes to weight loss or illness, right? They're told they have a diagnosis and they live and die by that diagnosis. Exactly. Well, I don't treat someone by their diagnosis. Right. Right? We're treating you by what is your symptoms? What are your symptoms? And let's get to the root cause of where these symptoms are coming from. And let's not just band-aid it with medication. Let's figure out how, right? The body, I mean, you talk about it in your book, the body has an amazing capacity to heal itself. It does. Give it the right tools. So exactly. you're talking about part of it is nutritionally, but the other part of it that's that mental, emotional connection is huge. Because I, I have clients who are weight loss clients, until they don't lose that emotional baggage, they will never lose their physical weight. That it's physical so weight is a symptom of their emotional baggage every time. And, and, so it's a huge, huge percentage. And that's why I've incorporated health coaches. Yeah. So I was going to say, you know, that I would imagine, you know, once you've opened that mm -hmm. door, open the box, then you have to have people work with a coach who can help them continue moving on that journey because there's a lot to download. It's like a deep box. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, and, and I always say to people, this has to be a journey and the journey goes at your pace and it has to be realistic and it has to be sustainable. So emotionally, they want the weight loss now. They want to feel better now. But until we rebalance all of those imbalances, their body will not achieve that. We've got to, we've got to flip the switch. And really, this, if there's one message, it's not, oh, here's the quick fix to weight loss. It's why, why am I not losing weight? Because my body is so imbalanced. So if you heal the imbalances, the weight loss is... Huh. It's and, like an outer layer. It's sort of like it's the, what's sealing everything in and you have yeah. to crack the layers. And I think that's where it's, it's interesting you talk about that because, you know, depending on what genomic testing we're looking at, we haven't even got there yet, right? But we actually can see where people have genes that can feed right into that emotional imbalance, right from the gut, right? We're looking at BDNF or LEPR, leper, and um, foot to these genes that, you know, that we look at them biochemically, but we also look at them emotionally as well. Right. And every single time, pretty much. Yeah. If that is the way a client's predisposed of what they're manifesting, we can actually see it in their genes mm -hmm. or kind of point that and say, okay, there's workarounds here. It's not the reason why, but right. um, genes will certainly kind of set, trigger you on that journey. So. Right. Well, even for my own, when I went back and did my own genetics and looked at, you know, what is my predisposition, right? You, you have cancer once, you certainly don't want to go through it again. Right. And what are my predispositions towards, right? My inflammatory mark markers and, uh, and what are the things that I need to really pay attention to, 
that will tip that needle either way. So, and the emotional piece is just as, just as important in some cases, if not more so, and connecting that with the, you know, their tendency to be uh, those addictive behaviors, right? right? All of that is, is, is really very telltaling in the genomics too. It is, you know, it's fascinating. I mean, obviously not everybody's listening is going to be fluent in genomics. That's why we're having the DNA chats, but it is really, really interesting if you were to do a client intake and then you start to see, okay, there's anxiety or insomnia or these addictive behaviors. When we unpack the DNA, we start to look at biochemistry and we say, aha, you know, or if these biochemical cycles are not working efficiently, potentially, um, part of that we have to work on emotionally and with exercise, but the other part is, is going to come down to food and, and maybe supplementation. Mm -hmm. Maybe, <laughs> you know, it's right. Right. Well, the goal is always to do it with food. I just, again, you know, why, why do we get people in the kitchen to teach them how to nourish themselves? Because I always say you can't supplement away a bad diet. No, you can't. And there's right. no supplement for your diagnosis and your diagnosis is a label anyway. Right. <laughs> and that's what I love about our work. As you said at the beginning, it's, um, you know, a, a diagnosis is a label people are living with, uh, but when we work in functional nutrition and biochemistry and with genomics, we start basically with a blank sheet of paper. The, the diagnosis is irrelevant. That's just, it's sort of, I can't even explain what it is. It's something like, it, it helps us organize a protocol we're supposed to work with when in fact every person is unique. So, And I will tell you, half of the people that I see come in with the wrong diagnosis anyway. <laughs> Oh, like for example, for example, so I'll give you a perfect example. I had a young girl come in the other day, diagnosed as PCOS. Um, I looked at her labs. I talked to her. We had a conversation um, and we, I had her parents in the room and we were talking and I'm going, mm, two and two is not making four here. And um, I kind of realized it was more of an adrenal issue. She had some post-traumatic issues that wow. were really revolved around nothing. I mean, more, more trauma based on pressure, you know, as a young yeah. girl going to making, you know, she was on a sports team, the pressure to do a collegiate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that kind of thing, pressure from emotional pressure from the family. Um, and I called back the doctor. I have a great relationship with the doctor. And I said, this is not PCOS. This is definitely some level of adrenal dysfunction, stress, overload, you know, and, um, and the doctor, you know, kind of looks at the labs and she says, you know, I don't disagree with you. Wow. And so we're kind of reframing how we are, you know, dealing with her. I mean, the same thing with IBS, how all day long we see people with IBS. I mean, to me, IBS is sort of the diagnosis of, I don't really know what's wrong with you, but oh, we're going to you are. Right. <laughs> right? And so um, people come in with all these uh, you know, issues going on with their gut and they're labeled as IBS and they think it's IBS. And you know, here's a proton pump inhibitor and see you later. I know. <laughs> Which means, yeah, which will give you even, you'll be even more symptomatic exactly. for something else. Right. right. So, oh you know, so to, to live and die by a diagnosis to me is, is not really the way that I look at people. You treat the person, not the paper. Correct. Correct. You can put that away. So all that being the case, and you've had these 20 years, like early adopting functional nutrition, sitting on the front row when Jeffrey Bland <laughs> <laughs> opened up this new arena for us to think through. Um, Along comes genomics. Yeah. So, ah. yeah, I know. It's like, wow. Like, those of us who are trained in nutrition, like, this is what we've been waiting for. Because this, actually, uh, is really what we're trained to do, is to unpack uh, right. the nutrition science that's sort of directed by our genes. So, how did that illuminate how you're thinking now? I mean, given your experience, what what is that doing for your practice, your thinking? Um. Well, I think it's a allowing me to educate people in a in, in in a completely different way in terms of saying, okay, you're not relegated to the destiny of what your DNA is saying. Here's a crystal ball, and if we don't change this, this this could be where you're headed. Yeah. Um, and so, for a lot of people, they are very proactive in that, right? In terms of uh, being able to to uh, take that information and say, oh, okay, I don't want to end up with heart disease like my dad or I, you know, have a, a cancer risk in the family. What is my, what, what am I looking at in terms of that? And how do I get ahead of this, right? How am I proactive rather than reactive? And exactly. so for a lot of people, it's that. 
I can tell you, I did the genomics on my son and we, and my son, you know, is 23 years old. You would think is completely healthy and he is for the most part, but I did his genetics and he has the same um, trajectory as all of the males on my dad's side. And they've all had a cardiovascular event. Interesting. And, his gen and then, so I did his genetics and then I, genomics, and then I came back and did his nutri, um, I did a Nutrival and I did his, his lipid markers. And lo and behold, he is, his, his, his markers are crazy off the chart. So I said, to him, I said to him, okay, we've got to get a handle on this now because otherwise you may be suffering the same fate as your grandfather and, and his uncle, you know, your uncles. And so to me, that was the best gift I could give him because Absolutely. now we're ahead of that, right? We were able to, to identify he was having some gut issues. He was having some things going on. We then identified he's got some uh, gluten sensitivity. Yeah, he, isn't that interesting? Diet. I did. He has the haplotype. He also has mold sensitivity, and he has the haplotype for, for, for the um, predisposition to be sensitive to mold. So all of these things we've now been able to uncover with him, that are changing his health now at twenty three. Yeah, and he's informed for life. Because once you make the change, it's just maybe a nip and a tuck and a check-in, right? Exactly. So he has exactly. his prescription for life. Yes, and that's and that's what it is. I, you know, I've uh, again, I've had friends who um, and clients who have had people in their family with the, um, you know, the BRCA genes or have tested positive for all some of those cancer markers, and we've done this test, and sure enough, you know, there are things in those inflammatory markers, right? If if you don't mitigate your stress now, that is going to set in motion all of those inflammatory cytokines that are going to lead you down the road of, of, of an autoimmune disorder. Basically, yeah. Well, yes, not basically, but true. And I think he's going back to cancer because it, it cropped up again there. I think one of the things I find most devastating, and I certainly didn't work in oncology. I don't think you did either. I wouldn't like specialize yeah, like in oncology. two minutes when I was training, but yeah. Yeah, we did, yeah. A few days. So we kept with folic acid or whatever it was back then, but uh, not to belittle the field at all. But I think one of the things I find most stressful when I look at the field of cancer is we will genotype a tumor. So we know how to treat the tumor. But we then never open the door to DNA testing or genomic testing so that we can actually help people uncover why they may have been predisposed to cancer to start with. Mm -hmm. Right. So we, we stop halfway. Right. Right. But and that and that's where functional medicine comes into play. It's educating, you know, the physicians and saying here, here's why we need to do this. I mean, I this, you know, to me, this field is still in its infancy. When I talk to people about genomics, like what right <laughs> um so i think this stuff and the work that you're doing obviously you know with the book and and on all of the classes and the education uh, we are on the front of the wave and we it's up to us to educate educate the doctors and educate people on why this is so crucial to have this information first yeah it, it is and i would say that whether you're a clinician listening or a member of the public um that in 2020 give yourself the gift of dna that's what I would say, you know, do walk that walk because it's a game changer is one of the individuals who taught both you and I in genomics, Meryl said, um, DNA information or genomic information is probably one of the best signposts in our toolbox. And that's what it is. It's a signpost. It tells us where to look. It doesn't tell us what you're predisposed to. It actually, as I saw today, like somebody put together like a little infographic said, Gen genetics won't tell you how you're going to die. It'll tell you how you're going to live and thrive. Right. So, right. Right. so true. Tool. yeah. I, I, I just think we need to embrace a little bit more of that preventative mentality. <laughs> rather, you know, being proactive rather than reactive. I always say it's so much easier to treat something uh, before it actually is manifesting than, you know, than, than once it happens, right? It's very hard to treat a disease once it's, not hard, but it's harder, certainly. Yeah, you gotta yeah. work in reverse, patch things up, restart the engine. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it's a lot of work. If somebody has SIBO or, you know, some of these really acute digestive issues, it's, it's a lot of yeah. healing that has to be done, right? Yeah. That's yeah. expensive. It's expensive on office business. It's expensive on yeah. what the tools are that you need uh, 
you know, to use to get well. So, oh, and, 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 and emotionally expensive, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> time and energy. So yeah, for sure. I hear you. So, okay. Son, the eldest 23. Oh my gosh. Maybe he was 16 or maybe <laughs> so he's off to medical school. I know that. So, and he, yep. his health map has been rewritten. So what about the next two? <laughs> Your other two daughters. Yes, yes I, I am working on theirs. I can only handle one kid at a time, but yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. a lot of work. I'm doing yes, I am in the process of doing the girls. We had some I had some gut issues. I had to got to work a little bit in reverse with one of them, but um yeah. So uh, yeah, I am uh, I am doing that. And uh, you know, they'll all they'll all get it and I'm sure they're just can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I know. So here we go, mom. But you know, they will be so grateful for life because it's like having, it's like an inheritance. Like you may be set for life, you know, depending on what you inherit property, money, or just, I don't know, beauty, who, who knows. Um, but you know, when you have the gift of your DNA, your genomic testing, it's like, here's your script. Right. You might change a little bit, but here you go. So Right. Yeah. And, you know, even with the clients that I worked with, there was one that we, you know, recently worked with together um, and she is having amazing, amazing results yeah. um, because we're able to go back and say, okay, let's again, look at what have we, you know, what have we addressed? What do we still need to look at? And what is ongoing in terms of just always making sure in the back of your head, like a little check mark. Yeah, I've got that covered. I've got that covered. And, and you, you can do that with, with, you know, with looking at your DNA, right? It, that doesn't change. And so, oh yeah, yes. you know, looking at what is my exposure? What is my time? It takes on a different light because it's not just nutritional, right? We do have to yeah. look at the behavior and we have to look at the exposure and we know exactly. our environment, right? Is so um, toxic. So, so what are the genes that'll predispose us to issues just from that? Right. And you can definitely see when you're waiting, W-I-G-H-T-I-N-G, where the preponderance of genes are telling the story. You right. pretty much know if somebody has problems with detoxification or biotransformation, they're going to be very chemically sensitive or maybe, you know, they're going to manifest with a lot of malaise, yes. maybe migraines, et cetera. And so we, DNA tells us what to look at. So as always, those of you who've been listening in, we never say, okay, this is your predisposition. We'll look, we'll organize the gene variants. We'll look at what we might want to validate through biomarker testing. That tells us right there, bam, go here first, you know. Well, and I think something important that you said, if it, you know, is that we automatically assume, okay, that a headache is related to one thing, but we don't go back and look at how, what is the interconnectivity of your symptoms, right? And, right? and it's not always, like I said, it's not always about the diagnosis, is what is that telling us in correlation to where your DNA lies? And maybe we're looking up the, you know, we're barking up the wrong tree. Very true. Uh, yeah, your DNA doesn't lie. Uh, it's so true. It, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of where do we go first, right? right. That's what I found, right? It's like, wait a minute, yes. we thought it's one thing. And now I'm like, no, 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 we have to go look here. It's amazing. I, it's just absolutely amazing. And you know, the other thing from an economic perspective, I think it cuts out a lot of guesswork with lab work because yes. even though we have phenomenal labs we can work with, it can be expensive. So yeah. it can fine tune, look, go over here. And nowadays we can actually custom order labs, which is awesome. So, you know, uh, fine tune a panel either. And so it's amazing stuff. I know everyone would want you to be on here for hours, Meryl. <laughs> <laughs> I also know. Well, it's for hours, but you know. Yeah, no, we always have such good talks, but I also know that you have about five minutes before you have to jump back into your practice. You just took time out during the day today to jump on with me. Always. A You're phenomenal. She's in Florida, everyone. So uh, go get her. Go after Meryl or, or find me and we'll yeah. connect you. MerylBrandwine.com. Yeah. Meryl Meryl there you go. MerylBrandwine.com. There you go. Meryl, thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay. <laughs>